Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. What's your favorite ammo type? For most people, that's going to come down to one of three different things. Full-length darts, half-length darts, or rival rounds. What about tiny frisbees that just whiz through the air in slow motion and crash into whatever they hit and bounce off of walls and stuff? You wouldn't usually think of that. Here's one of Nerf's frisbees. This is a Vortex disc. It's my favorite projectile ever made, and today I'm going to be taking a look at my favorite blaster of my favorite projectile ever made. And in today's video, I'm going to try and explain to you guys why the Vortex Nitron is such a freaking cool piece of technology that everybody needs to know about. Cue the intro. <laughs> Vortex Nitron is a 2011 release out of Hasbro and was one of the original Nerf Vortex releases, a series that I did not pay attention to when it came out because it gave off the same vibe as like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teens are scary and turtles are mutant and they're ninjas at the same time. It was too much going on. It seemed like with the term Nerf Vortex, they were getting a little bit too edgy with their, their series titles and I just never paid attention to Vortex. Gosh, I was an idiot, because this series is insanely cool because it introduced a niche that I kid you not is still just as usable and just as relevant today as it was all the way back in 2011. You'll see what I mean when we get into the firing of this blaster, but first, I gotta start with the design. Hasbro, you do not get to make a blaster that looks this freaking good and not tell me about it personally. What the heck is this thing? It looks insane. There is so much detail here and it's all painted. It's all painted on both sides. What, what is this? Don't worry, I'll address that in a minute, but it's painted on both sides. There is a ton of stuff going on here. And here's the thing about Nerf Vortex blasters. They look a bajillion times better in person than any video or photo can possibly describe because the plastic has been molded in such a way that there are different styles and texturings built into the shell that reflects off the light. So there is matte mixed with glossy, mixed with a sort of scratchy plastic, and it creates these sort of hexagonal patterns that look like some kind of industrial circuit board. And when you hold the blaster and you see these patterns reflecting in the sun, it makes the blaster look like it's like holographic. It is an unbelievably cool design that has never been matched by anything else. The closest thing I can get to having this design matched in terms of just how freaking awesome it is, is when it Nerf and Elite, or Nerf Elite did the sort of camouflage kind of thing on it in the same way, where they mix different type of plastic molding. Yeah, this looks better than the Elite though. This is an insanely good design and I have no complaints with it at all. What about the ergonomics? This blaster has a foregrip, a main grip, and a stock, as well as this humongous cheek rest. And this stock is really goofy looking, but there's actually a reason for it to look this goofy, and I will explain that in a little bit. But first, the main grip. Where have you been all my life? It's perfect in every way. I have no complaints with this grip. It's the perfect size. It is incredibly smooth and filleted. It feels so good. It feels sturdy. This is what you call a grip and a half. And honestly, this is one thing that I've got to give Vortex. The grips. Oh my gosh, are they ever good. This is an outstanding main grip. What about the other two? Oh, the stock is just as good. The stock is one of the few Nerf stocks that are the perfect pull. It's flat and rounded on the back. Like, like it's just, oh my gosh, the cheek rest. Oh my gosh, it's comfy. It's just like this nice big flat place to put your cheek on. And the foregrip is incredibly solid feeling. It's this big vertical foregrip that is built into the blaster so it isn't removable or anything. I'll address that in a second. It isn't removable or anything, and it just feels so good. I will say that the main grip is better than the foregrip, but only because the foregrip is a little bit sharper on the edges. Not by enough to really notice, but if you really feel for it, you can tell that it is a sort of square style foregrip. But oh my gosh, is this not one of the comfiest blasters to shoulder and hold like a primary ever made? 
If you can name a blaster that is comfier than this one, tell me in the comments and I'll tell you why I disagree. But now for the burning question, how does this blaster work? Because I've said nothing but good things about it up to this point and the good things are not going to stop here. This is a Vortex magazine. It's weird, and it's actually designed really, really nicely. Completely different than N-Strike magazines, yet built with the same quality as traditional N-Strike mags. This magazine is very wide and pretty chunky. This is a very chunky magazine. So uh, creating a loadout with these isn't exactly optimal, uh, but it does work. You load in up to 20 discs into the included magazines that this blaster came with, because yes, both of these mags were included with the Nitron when you would get it from Nerf. Yeah, remember back in the day when they actually used to put two mags in the box? Who would have thought? Then you put one mag in the front and you can put one mag in the stock because it has a mag holder in the back. And then the blaster has two triggers, the rev trigger and the main trigger, as well as this paddle mag release that you can hit with your thumb ambidextrous on both sides. I'll address that in a second. But first you rev the blaster and then it's fully automatic. I bet you're wondering what the rate of fire looks like. It's fast, it's beefy, it's... much to be desired. But we'll, we'll get back to the rate of fire. Let's first talk about the triggers and smoothness of operation. This blaster, as I just mentioned, has three triggers. The rev trigger is very clicky. It feels a lot like the strife trigger, but actually a little bit clickier than the strife rev trigger. And that's kind of a bad thing because it is like a full on function, but like it loudly and aggressively clicks when you pull it forward. And it's not, it's not very good. It could be a lot better. As for the main trigger, it is pretty good. It's just pulling an electronic switch. There's nothing really to write home about here, but I do want to address the mag insertion and release. Oh, it's good. Putting the mag in and taking the mag out is some of the best that I've ever seen on any Nerf blaster. It feels great and it feels just as good in the stock. This stock, okay, just one mag for a little bit. This stock mag holder, is very, very nice. Because of the way that the stock is designed, you can kind of use the back of the stock as a guide. Because there's this big like thing in the back, you can just guide it into the slot, tilt it up, and then push it in. And it's got a pretty good grip on it, unless you shake it too much. Then uh, the mag has a tendency to fall out. Yeah, you, you gotta really shake it. But sometimes it just kind of happens to fall out when you don't want it to. I'm not sure why it happens and there doesn't seem to be any sort of rhyme or reason to it happening, but it does tend to happen. So I probably filled your ears with nothing burgers. You guys are wanting to know what in the hell is going on with this ammo type and why do I like it so much? <laughs> if you haven't already seen a Vortex Blaster and know why they're so wonderful, this ammo type is a bisque. And unlike a foam dart, which kind of loses its velocity immediately after shooting out of the barrel, like basically as soon as the dart leaves the barrel, it is already starting to lose velocity. Even out of a super high FPS blaster, it doesn't ever take that long for a dart to just kind of fall to the ground and hit the ground. These discs, on the other hand, get spin on them as soon as they leave the barrel. And because they're large and flat, they spin and they just go and they keep going and they keep going, and they keep going, and they keep going, and they keep going, and they keep going for a very, very long time. And because of the low FPS out of these blasters, you can kind of create the perfect distraction shots, having these slow motion discs slowly gliding through the air all over the nerf field and get everybody's attention on them while your teammates obliterate your opponents with regular blasters. That's why I love this series so much. Let's see it fire. There's still this in it. There we go. Now we're empty. So, uh, while the rate of fire probably turned you off when I showed it to you for the first time, do you get it yet? Do you understand why that rate of fire is perfectly acceptable for this blaster? 
The blaster basically shoots in slow motion, and the fact that the discs fly so slowly makes the rate of fire out of this being slow perfectly valid, because what that means is by the time one disc clears an area, another disc is already entering, and you get the perfect wave of discs cycling through to keep everybody's attention on them, even if the discs are flying slow, you're going to notice them, especially if there's more distance for the discs to travel. The one minor complaint is the fact that, uh, you probably noticed this earlier. What in the heck is going on with this? There is only one motor powering these flywheels. Only on the right side is there a motor powering the flywheels, which means the left wheel is just free spinning. There's nothing to propel it. And while in a dart blaster, that would be an abhorrent idea, on this blaster, it makes perfect sense because you're making the discs spin by giving them propulsion only from one side. The downside is that it constantly shoots to the right. Attempting to aim this blaster by usage of looking down and using the iron sights or the scope that it came with that I don't have is futile. You basically just have to aim and then aim slightly to the left. Otherwise, you're not gonna hit your target. If I wanted to shoot you guys right now, I would have to aim this way in order for the disc to travel at the camera. So it's really weird the way that you have to aim this thing, but it does kind of make sense because of the way that the discs are flying out of the blaster. So with all that said, what do I think of the Nitron? And do I recommend that you pick one up? Yes. Yes, I do like the Nitron. And yes, I do recommend that you guys look at these. I've been wanting to cover Vortex for a while, but I haven't been able to get around to it because I didn't really know how to introduce the ammo type. Yes, I reviewed one Vortex style blaster on this channel before, the Zombie Strike Ricochet, the worst Vortex blaster ever made, but I haven't reviewed a standalone Vortex blaster up until this very point. And I plan to do more Vortex reviews now that I finally established this stupid ammo type because this series is so cool that I can't not talk about it. With all that said, let me give you guys two recommendations for where to pick the Nitron up. eBay and Blaster Barn. I found this one on Blaster Barn for $7. That is an insanely good price. I'm not sure if they're still $7 or if they're like $12 or what, because I got this in a bulk order, so I might be confusing that price for another one, but it's either seven or 12 bucks. Extremely good price for these. As for eBay, you can't really get them for that cheap, but you can still get them for a good price between the $15 to $20 market, or if you get one that includes the scope, that market goes from a $30 to $35 market. So you can get these things for pretty cheap basically anywhere. And it is a blaster I highly recommend taking a look at. With all that said, thanks for watching. Bye.